Hi, welcome back. I am Ashley Miller, again here with the SPURS program. Today we are joined by another SPURS AI here at UT Austin, Lisa Gulisarian. She works with the SPURS program and she teaches rhetoric classes here at UT. And she's going to talk with you today about media kits. Hey, I'm Lisa and I um, am a graduate student in English. What I study is pretty awesome. It's um, it's cities and the way that people write about cities, and I'm actually teaching a class right now called The Rhetoric of Suburbs and Slums, so I have a lot to say about that. But when I'm doing my own research, I often have to go and look for who these writers were writing to, and how I do that is I often go to their websites, and that's called looking for media kits, which is what we'll be doing today. So today we'll be looking at a couple websites and looking at ways that we can find information about who these authors were specifically targeting, who their audiences were. Um, so media kits are these little parcels of information about the audience, and that's what we'll be looking at today. So we'll go to the computer. And we're at our computer now. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about media kits. First, we're going to talk about why people use media kits and why they create them. And then we'll look at a couple examples of media kits online. So let's talk about why people create media kits and what we can do with them as rhetoric students. Media kits are created for advertisers. So for example, a website like Google will create a media kit in order to tell potential advertisers why they should put their advertisement on Google. Um, so what are we as rhetoric students doing with this information that is actually targeting advertisers? What we're doing is we are finding out about audiences. So we are going to find a media kit and the media kit will tell us some information about who is going to read a specific um, newspaper, who is reading a specific um, magazine or any other sort of venue like that or any type of publication. So first thing we'll learn with media kits is audience. The second thing we'll actually learn is what types of stories or what types of articles are published on that venue. Often in a media kit we'll have um, more explanation about the different sections of a newspaper or the different sections of a magazine or, um, or a blog. So those are the two reasons why we, as rhetoric students, look at media kits. So let's try and find some now, ourselves, online. So let's start with something, you know, a, a big newspaper. Let's try the New York Times. So we're on Google right now. Um, let's try finding the New York Times homepage. So let's just put in New York Times. Okay, so the New York Times nytimes.com. So now we're on their homepage. Now where would the media kit be? I'll show you. So we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. At the very, very, very bottom of the page, there's usually a small button or a small link that says something like advertise, which is what we want to look at right here, advertise. So when we click that, we're often taken to a website for advertisers. For potential advertisers. We want to look at the media kit. So the New York Times media kit here, we can look at specific sections. So let's look at the newspaper. When it's when we find an article that's actually printed in the newspaper, we can go and see who the audience is and what types of stories are published in the newspaper. So let's go click on the media kit. Okay, so we find out about a little bit about New York Times. You'll often see in media kits some information about the actual venue, the publication. So we'll get some information about the publication. We, we know the New York Times has been operating for more than 150 years and that it's won many Pulitzer Prizes. Another thing we could find out, again, is audience. So let's go down here and see. Oh, there's a button for audience, so let's click on that. Okay, so it says the audience here is about a little more than four and a half million people, mostly male, but it's pretty split even. And then we can see the median age and also the median HHI's income, um, household income. So the median income is almost $100,000, which is pretty high. Um, we can see the education. So most of the people who read the New York Times are college educated. And then we can see professional or managerial 
and top management um, positions. So what type of people, um, what types of professions are reading the New York Times? We can see a good majority of them are in managerial or professional jobs. Okay, so now we know the audience. We can also look at things like the newspaper section. So now we know, okay, there are different types of sections in a newspaper. So the New York Times publishes things like news, so more factual, objective-based um, articles, and that'll be in the main news section. Sometimes there will be articles like that in the day, business day section, so about, um, for example, technology or um, personal business. There might be some articles in there that are objective. Um, then we have feature, um, we have the arts section, which has reviews, which actually are not often objective and could be very subjective. Um, and, but then we also have updates on film, so something like that can be very objective. So it'll be something like Brad Pitt is going to be starring in a new movie. That's pretty objective. Then we have a sports section, science times, dining, home, Thursday, styles, uh, weekend arts, arts and leisure, travel, all sorts of book reviews. So these are all different types of sections and all different types of writing that are in the New York Times. So whenever you're thinking about looking for media kits, think about whether you can find some information about the types of sections in that publication, which will give you some idea about what types of articles are written in that, um, in that venue. Okay, so that was the New York Times. Why don't we try a different website? So why don't we try a website for, um, let's see, let's try one for a magazine. So let's go to Google again. Okay, so we're at Google. Let's try The Atlantic. The Atlantic is a magazine that's published monthly. So let's go to their website. Okay, so we're at theatlantic.com and we're gonna again see if we could scroll down to the very bottom. Usually you want to look for the link that says something like advertise or media kit or um, something along those lines. So here we go. We have an advertise link right there. Okay, so once we've clicked on advertise, um, we can get some information about the Atlantic. So we can we find out that it's the winner of the 2009 Webby Awards for Best Magazine and People's Voice, we get some information about the actual venue. Another thing that we can find out is on the website, on the actual Atlantic.com, there are 5.1 million users. And then 16 minutes is the usual amount of time spent on that website. We can also find out some information about the audience. On the Atlantic.com, the average age is 44. The average household income is 118,000. Again, it's well-educated, um, um, kind of wealthy people. Okay, so another thing we can look at is the specific media kit for the Atlantic. And this will have more information about the, the print version of the, the magazine. Okay, so this is now a PDF that we're going to look at together. This is something that they've put together again for potential advertisers. These are the editors here. We have contributors, people who publish at the Atlantic um, regularly, and we can see what types of stories they write about. Okay, um, here we got we have some more information about what types of awards. Uh, the Atlantic has won. And then we can also get some more information about, let's see, here we go, the magazine reader profile. So now we get specific information about who is reading this type of, uh, the, the Atlantic, the actual magazine. So again, we see well-educated, uh, affluent, um, mostly male, and professional managerial and influentials, which um, you'll see that often in media kits. It basically means somebody who can make a decision about how much money to spend. Um, on the, Maybe they're the head of the household. They're probably also in very top um, positions, so they can make decisions about what toilet paper they're going to use in their giant company. So these are important um, people to think about. So who is reading the article that you've found? Okay, so that was the Atlantic. Why don't we try, let's try a blog. 
So let's try a blog like um, Good Magazine's blog. So why don't we go to Google again? Okay, so we're at Google. We're going to try Good Magazine. Good Magazine has a great website. Um, they, they have tons of content on this website. But they, um, so again, here we have Michelle Bachman. So maybe one of you are following Michelle Bachman. Um, we, so on this website, we can get some more information about good and what types of stories are published on this blog-style magazine format. So why don't we go again down to the very bottom of the page, and let's look for something like advertise. Okay, here we go. There's an advertise tab again. So once we've clicked on that, we can get some more information about the media kit for this, uh, for this magazine. So we can download their media kit and get some, again, more information about the audience. And now they tell us what they make and what they do and all sorts of things. Um, this is some more information about what types of content they create. This is the audience. So as we can see, um, it's split pretty evenly between male and female, but the age here is different. It's younger than the New York Times and the Atlantic but it's a higher level of college graduates. We have 78% college graduates. And they even say it's higher than the New York or the Wall Street Journal or The Economist. So these are important things to learn about um, what, who's reading that, that magazine or that newspaper or that website that you just found your article in. Okay, so why don't we try another way to look at audience. So you can look at the media kit, but you can also do something um, a, little, a little more interesting. So why don't we go to a website that's called quantcast.com, and that's Q-U-A-N-T-C-A-S-T.com, quantcast. So we're at quantcast. Why don't we see what information we get about Good Magazine? And here we go. So Good dot is which is the website we were just at okay so when we're here we can check right here in this corner whether this information is quantified which means whether it has been directly measured or whether this is more of an approximation so when we're here we can see this one's quantified so it's a little more credible this information that we're getting here now we can see what types of people read it. Um, we can also see, again, the demographic information. It's split pretty evenly between male and female. It's, it's mostly young 18 to 34 year olds that are looking at this um, website. And then we can even see in terms of race and how many kids they have and their income. Um, we can also see what types of websites this audience likes. That could be really interesting because if you want to um, group a bunch of um, magazines that have the same readership together, you can look at Quantcast and see, okay, well, on good.is, they said this about Obama, and then on a similar website, The Nation, they also said something similar. Um, so you can, you can play around with this and see what, what happens. Um, but that's about it for finding media kits. I hope you've had an a eventful time with me, and I, I hope this has been helpful for you. Thanks a lot. See you later.